Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It is May 6, 2021, and we will continue reading out of the book of Genesis in the Amplified Version. Genesis chapter 36 and onwards. Genesis chapter 36. Now, this is the genealogy of Esau. Oh, I'm sorry, 37. Genesis chapter 37. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the, son, and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now, Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then, behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks, and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and there he was, wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, They have departed from here. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brother. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, and we shall say, Some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into, his, into this pit, 
which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up, and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes. And he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn. To pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor Edison Reyes, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Atelisette Domingo, thank you for tuning in as well. Hallelujah. Be a vessel of God's treasures and share them as you read His Word. Stay favored with your family. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Edison. And I receive this word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are jars of clay, hiding, storing up heavenly treasure. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 38. It came to pass at that time that Judah departed from his brothers and visited a certain Adullamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw that and Judah saw there a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he married her and went in to her. So she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Ur. She conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. And she conceived yet again and bore a son and called his name Shelah. He was at Chezib when she bore him. Then Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. And Judah said to Onan, Go in to your brother's wife and marry her and raise up an heir to your brother. But Onan knew that the heir would not be his. And it came to pass when he went in to his brother's wife that he emitted on the ground, lest he should give an heir to his brother. 
And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Therefore he killed him also. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house till my son Shelah is grown. For he said, Lest he also die like his brothers. And Tamar went and dwelt in his father's house. Now in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up to his sheep shearers at Timnah, he and his friend Hira the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. So she took off her widow's garments, covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself and sat in an open place which was on the way to Timnah. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given to him to, uh, as a wife. She was not given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot, because she had covered her face. Then he turned to her by the way and said, Please let me come in to you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. So she said, what will you give me that you may come back uh, that you may come in to me? And he said, I will send you a young goat from the flock. So she said, Will you give me a pledge till you send it? Then he said, What pledge shall I give you? So she said, Your signet and cord and your staff that is in your hand. Then he gave them to her and went in to her, and she conceived by him. So she arose and went away and laid aside her veil and put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judah sent the young goat by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand. But he did not find her. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot who was openly by the roadside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. So he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. Also, the men of the place said, There was no harlot in this place. Then Judah said, Let her take them for herself, lest we be shamed. For I sent this young goat, and you have not found her. And it came to pass after, uh, uh, I'm sorry. And it came to pass about three months after that Judah was told, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has played the harlot. Furthermore, she is with child by harlotry. So Judah said, Bring her out and let her be burned. When she was brought out, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man to whom these belong, I am with child. And she said, Please determine whose these are, the signet, and cord and staff. So Judah acknowledged them and said, She has been more righteous than I because I did not give her to Shelah, my son, and he never knew her again. Now it came to pass at the time for giving birth that, behold, twins were in her womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that the one put out his hand and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand, saying, This one came out first. Then it happened, as he drew back his hand, that his brother came out unexpectedly. And she said, How did you break through? This breach be upon you. Therefore his name was called Perez. Afterward his brother came out, who had the scarlet thread on his hand. And his name was called Zira. Hallelujah. Ate Lisette Domingo, may the Lord bless you more. Arturo, Arturo Ayla Mampusti, happy Thursday. Amen. Thank you, Ate. God bless you. I receive it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 39. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, 
an officer, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the royal guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph and he, even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper, succeed in his hand. So Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in his sight and he served him as his personal servant. He made Joseph overseer over his house and he put all that he owned in Joseph's charge. It happened that from the time that he made Joseph overseer in his house and put him in charge over all that he owned, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. So the, Lord, so the Lord's blessing was on everything that Potiphar owned in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left all that he owned in Joseph's charge. And with Joseph there he did not need um, and with Joseph there, he did not need to pay attention to anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and attractive in form and appearance. Then after a time, his master's wife looked at Joseph with desire, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look with me in the house. My master does not concern himself with anything. He has put everything that he owns in my charge. He is not greater in this house than uh, he is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God and your husband? And so it was that she spoke to Joseph persistently day after day but he did not listen to her plea to lie beside her or be with her then it happened one day uh, then it happened one day that joseph went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the men of the household was there in the house she caught joseph by his outer robe saying lie with me but he left his robe in her hand and ran and got outside the house. When she saw that he had left his robe in her hand and had run outside, she called to the men of her household and said to them, Look at this. Your master has brought a Hebrew into the household to mock and insult us. He came to me to lie with me and I screamed. When he heard me screaming, he left his robe with me and ran outside the house. So she left uh, so she left Joseph's outer robe beside her until his master came home. Then she told her husband the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you, have brought, uh, whom you brought among us came to me to mock and insult me. Then as soon as I raised my voice and screamed, he left his, uh, he left his robe with me and ran outside the house. And when Joseph's master heard the words of his wife, saying, This is the way your servant treated me, his anger burned. So Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. So he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and extended loving kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the warden. The warden committed to Joseph's care, management, all the prisoners who were in the prison, so that whatever was done there, he was in charge of it. The warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with him. Whatever Joseph did, the Lord made to prosper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Brother Jedidiah Reyes, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And... Um, Hallelujah. Let's see who else. Sister um, Evangelina Bugayong, thank you for tuning in. And Sister Kit Gregorio Evora, thank you for tuning in as well to our Bible reading. 
Um, the Pink Unicorn on Instagram. Thank you for tuning in. Um, my uh, my uh, my friend from uh, Cavite. Hallelujah. Si uh, Nino. Hi Nino. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to our Bible reading this morning. Genesis chapter 40. <clears throat> now sometime later, the cupbearer, butler, and the baker for the king of Egypt offended their lord, Egypt's king. Pharaoh, Sesostris II, was extremely angry with his two officials, the chief of the cupbearers and the chief of the bakers. He put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the guard, in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard put Joseph in charge of them, and he served them. And they continued to be in custody for some time. Then the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, both dreamed a dream in the same night, each man with his own significant dream, and each dream with its personal interpretation. When Joseph came to them in the morning and looked at them, he saw that they were sad and, and depressed. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in confinement with him in his master's house, Why do you look so downhearted today? And they said to him, We have each dreamed distinct dreams. And there was no one to interpret, um, and there was no one to interpret them. So Joseph said to them, "Do not interpretations belong to God? Please tell me your dreams." So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph and said to him, "In my dream, there was a grapevine in front of me, and on the vine there were three uh, there were three branches. Then, as soon as it budded." Its blossoms burst open, and its clusters produced ripe grapes in rapid succession. Now Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup. Then I placed the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Then Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches represent three days. Within three days more... Uh, within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head, present you in public, and restore you to your position. And you will again put Pharaoh's cup into his hand, as you did when you were his cupbearer. Only think of me when it goes well with you, and please show me kindness by mentioning me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this house. For, in fact, I was taken, stolen from the land of the Hebrews by unlawful force. And even here, I have done nothing for which they should put me in the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation of the dream was good, he said to Joseph, I also dreamed, and in my dream there were three cake baskets on my head. And in the top basket, there were some of all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh. But the birds of prey were eating these foods out of the basket of my head. Joseph answered, This is the interpretation of it. The three baskets represent three days. Within three days more, within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and will hang you on a tree, gallows, pole, and you will not so much as be given a burial, but the birds will eat your flesh. Now on the third day, which was the Pharaoh's birthday, he released the two men from prison and made a feast for all his servants. And he lifted up the, the head of the chief cupbearer, and the head of the chief baker, that is, presented them in public among his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his office 
and the cupbearer once again put a cup put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But Pharaoh hanged the chief baker, just as Joseph had interpreted the meaning of the dreams to them. Yet, even after all that, the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot all about him. Hallelujah. Let's finish right there, brothers and sisters. And um, let's see who else is tuned in. Pastor Louis Espiritu, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Glory to God. And uh, hallelujah. Brother Ron Cainia, thank you for tuning in. God bless you as well, Kapadid. Let's see some messages here. At Lisette Domingo, uh, Amen. Prayer emoji. Hallelujah. And pa, uh, pa Brother Jedidiah Reyes. Amen. The Lord was, was with Joseph. So am I. Amen. The Lord is with us. Also, your presence, Jesus, is enough. Indeed, kapatid. Jesus is enough. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our ultimate, um, our pearl of great price. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. Very timely reminder. All right. Uh, brothers and sisters, let's come to the Lord in prayer at this time. Let's pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father God in heaven, we praise you and we magnify your name, Lord God. We, we lift your name on high. You are good. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you so much, Lord, for giving us another day of life, another day that we may experience your manifest presence, your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness, your love, your embrace, hallelujah, over us, Lord God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that continues to remind us of your great love hallelujah reminding us Lord God that when all things seem dark and hopeless you remain in control you remain present and you will see us through for you are faithful who promised we thank you, Lord God, for your emet. Hallelujah. Your faithfulness. You are the Amen. Hallelujah. Today, Father, as we start our day for work, for school, for travel, for homemaking, for ministry work, hallelujah. May you bless us, Lord. May you, may you grant us, Lord God, um, boldness, and perseverance, Lord God, to fulfill your will and purpose for our lives, Lord God, not by our own will or might, but by the power of your word and your Holy Spirit working in us and through us and for us, your wonderful works. Lord, it is not by our own flesh that we do these things, or if we do them by our own will or might, they will become vain. They will become nothing. But as long as we surrender our lives to you, as long as we commit our lives to your hands, then you will be 
uh, you will be the one who will make all things work together for good according to your will and purpose. Lord, give us the spirit of humility and submission, Lord God. Hallelujah. Give us wisdom that comes from above. Help us to do the right things at the right time. Hallelujah. I pray for my family, Isla, Alexandra, and myself, and um, my brothers and sisters in my household. Hallelujah, Brother Franz, Sister AC, and Kuya Mordecai. Lord, help us to continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ as we live our lives worthy of your calling, worthy of your kingdom. And as we lead other families to do the same, help us, Lord God, to proclaim your word, your gospel, without fear, without favor, with much boldness. I pray, Lord God, for my brothers and sisters who have taken time in their day to listen to God's word, those who are within the hearing of this prayer. For Pastor Edison Reyes and uh, Pastora Melinda and Brother Jedediah Reyes and their family, their household, Lord God, may you grant them, Lord God, strength and wellness. Hallelujah. Provide, Lord God, for their needs in every aspect of their life, whether physical, spiritual, financial, emotional, Lord God. To continue, Lord God, to trust in you with all of their hearts and not lean on their own understanding. In all their ways, acknowledge you that you may direct their paths. And I pray, Father, that the ministry that you have entrusted to them Trust in the Lord, the living God church in Las Piñas will continue to flourish, will continue to take in more families who will dedicate their lives to Jesus Christ. Surrender their lives, repent of their sins, and place their faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray, Father, that the that this ministry of yours in Las Piñas, Lord God, will be a bright light and a preserving salt agent to the city and surrounding areas, Lord God, as your gospel is being preached without fear, without favor, with much boldness. Hallelujah. And as uh, Pastor Edison preaches and teaches the whole counsel of God, may your name be glorified. May your name, Lord Jesus, be lifted high so that you will draw all men to yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for uh, Atelisset Domingo, Kuya Resti, Lian, and Carlos, Lord God. May your blessing of protection and guidance be upon them. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord, for their, um, their testimony, their humility in serving you father their boldness in living a life that is godly according to your will and your ways may you grant them the desire of their heart lord god that everyone in their family and relatives lord god and community will be saved by the blood of jesus hallelujah lord i pray for um, pastor louis espiritu and his family in Palawan, Lord God, serving the Palawenos and Mangyan indigenous people, Lord. I pray your protection, Lord God, your provision of strength and financial breakthrough over their lives, Father, as they uh, tend to your ministry there. Hallelujah. I pray that your under-shepherd will continue to grow and uh, flourish, Lord God, in the place that you have put him. And that more families will come to know the Lord Jesus through your through the ministry that you have entrusted to Pastor Louis Espiritu. And Lord, I pray um, that uh, more vineyard workers, Lord God, that there will be more laborers to come to your vineyard. 
to uh, to work in the harvest for the field is white for harvest and therefore we ask you Lord God the Lord of the harvest to send more workers hallelujah to your field glorify your name father hallelujah Lord I pray for Sister Evangelina Bugayong, Lord God, and uh, her family, her loved ones, Lord God, the Bugayong, the uh, Tandingan, the Trajano families, Lord. May you grant them, Lord God, strength and wisdom for the day. And uh, may they continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that your gospel bear fruit in the lives of your people. Hallelujah. Whom you have called. Hallelujah. I pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit to embrace Sister Evangelina Bugayong, Lord God. Remind her of your great love and your mercy. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord God, for... Uh, my uh, good friend Nino, Lord God, over on Instagram. Thank you, Lord God, for giving him the opportunity to tune in to this live stream. I pray, Lord God, for his salvation, healing, and deliverance in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, that your gospel bear fruit in his life for your glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for... Uh, Kit Gregorio Evora and um, and uh, their family, Lord God. I pray for their salvation, healing, and deliverance in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that um, more opportunities for them to listen to God's word be uh, made available to them. Hallelujah. And that they will come to know you, the only true God, and Jesus, whom you have sent. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord God, for Loris Hoxon and uh, her, her family, Lord. I continue to lift them up to you, that your salvation, healing, and deliverance come upon them with power, and that your gospel bear fruit in their lives for the glory of your name. Thank you so much, Lord, for um, giving us uh, every opportunity, hallelujah, to be made right with you through your gospel, through your word, through your Holy Spirit, who convicts us of sin, righteousness, and coming judgment. And that our hope is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord God, that more people will come to know you through the reading of your word, the proclamation of your gospel. Hallelujah. Even in this day and age, Lord God, with the technology that is available for us right now to use that the earth be filled with the knowledge of the Lord like water covering the seas hallelujah for the glory of your name to make your name famous Lord to make your name known to all people bless your holy name father in Jesus name amen amen Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you have been blessed by the reading of God's Word and our prayer today. And um, let's continue to uh, uh, stay in that attitude of devotion, of worship, as we meditate on the scriptures that we have read and uh, you know, um, always be aware of God's presence in our lives. Hallelujah. I'll see you all again next time. Uh, Sister Loris Hoxon, thank you for tuning in. And uh, may the Lord grant you the desire of your heart today. 
God bless you and always put God first. Uh, let me just read some comments here. Uh, Ate Lisette Domingo, thank you for praying. Kuya Resti, likewise. Atoy, hallelujah. Thank you, Kuya Resti. God bless you and your family. Brother Jedediah Reyes, Amen. Hallelujah. With much boldness, we say Amen. God is faithful and true. Awareness to His presence is our rest. Hallelujah. I believe that. I trust in that. The Lord is our rest. Amen. I'll see you all next time. God bless you. Always put God first. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.